You may have noticed that there have been a number of headlines in the mainstream press and print publications that like to place the blame on millennials for a number of economic issues. And when I say economic issues, I'm specifically talking about retailers that are shutting down or certain restaurants that are losing business. Just seems like millennials aren't spending their money like generations before them. And so as a result, we need to blame them for killing everything. Well, just to give you an example of some of these ridiculous headlines, and, and this was actually tweeted as a list by Brian Sheffield. I don't know who he is, but I love this list. These are all headlines, okay? Business Insider had written, millennials are killing the golf industry. <gasps> okay, uh, the New York Post, millennials are killing the movie business. Uh, Forbes, will the millennial generation kill Home Depot? Yes. Uh, <laughs> KPCC, which I like. Take two, are millennials killing the running trend? Yes, they are. This one's insane. Gothamist apparently had a headline that said, promiscuous, millennials are killing McDonald's. On those, it, let's those go. Are, that's just, are you all just saying random words? McIntyre in the morning, uh, millennials are killing off paper napkins. Are millennials killing the car industry? On purpose. Here's how millennials have killed crowdfunding. Are millennials cr killing credit? That's another one. Okay. Um. Yes, we yeah. are doing it on purpose. We're doing everything on because purpose because we want avocado toast. That's it. That's all it is. I do. I love. I love avocados and toast, but I've never really ordered it because I always feel so stupid. Why? Because it doesn't make sense to me it's to get so avocado good. toast. Toast has butter on it. You can do the butter. And just butter being, and I'm just being not a millennial. It's like like fruit that's butter. it. Okay. It's I am technically, but I'm on the border. <laughs> I don't know. I love avocados with a spoon. Yes, the answer is we spent. We'd rather splurge on things that are empirically less expensive than houses and golfing. Outings. Right. So that's that's one of the big issues, right? So if you guys notice, uh, major retailers like Macy's, Sears, all those companies that have been around for a really long time are losing business, and their stock prices are plummeting. Uh, millennials are also much less likely to invest in the stock market, and so it's just interesting to see how these stories are being covered because look, I think that it's a symptom of the economy that we've set up, which tells people over and over again, buy, spend, 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 go out, spend your money, right? Stimulate the economy, you need to spend your money. And so economic growth is very reliant on that type of activity. And obviously for anyone who's been paying attention, you know, millennials grew up during a time when, you know, the recession was a huge reality. They saw their family suffer as a result of that. They have personally suffered as a result of that due to underemployment or unemployment. They're also dealing with student loan debt to the tune of an average of 30,000 per person, right? So these are all factors that play a role. And so when our elders ask the question of why aren't they buying homes? I had a home at that. Yet buying a home is obviously very, very difficult in this current climate, especially when you consider the fact that, you know, uh, our wages haven't kept up with inflation. We do have more debt than previous generations. And when we do have a little bit of disposable income, when we do want to spend some money, we don't want to go to Applebee's. We don't want to go <laughs> to TGI Fridays. No offense. Speak for yourself, dude. I'll for other House reasons as well. For other reasons as well. But but more importantly, that disposable income is finite, right? And it's obviously so precious. And so if you're gonna go out to eat, you want it to be a special experience, like right? So that's another example of you know this misunderstanding between generations. Right. And what you just said is not that the the millennials are killing yeah maybe we we're killing applebees but we are also funding mm -hmm. like clean food we are funding the experiences that happen when you do splurge on these industries it's not that people aren't buying stuff people are buying stuff it's just that the tastes have changed and that's a circular argument because they're it like times change and and you're blaming that essentially that's right. like saying the greatest generation killed the telegraph yeah, that's a really good point. That is a really good point. Tastes are changing and I think one of the the biggest trends that you notice with younger generations is, you know, this 
desire to spend money on experiences versus material things, right? So back in the day, like the white picket fence, the home, the the fancy cars, the big screen TVs, those were things that appealed to people. And they still do appeal to some millennials. But I think millennials also really appreciate life experiences and they'd rather spend money on that, whether it's travel or a hobby, things like that, right? Also, yeah, you look, I mean, it's generational and generations are always different from each other and there's a generation that looks at their pre, you know, forebears and say, listen, you guys worked your buns off mm -hmm. until retirement. And you did you give yourself the opportunity to enjoy life? It doesn't seem like it. Yes. And you know what might happen is our kids will say, I can't believe my parents never bought a house. So when they retired and had no income, they didn't own a house, so they did they couldn't keep paying for the house because they didn't have any savings or anything. I guess there's problems with the millennial lifestyle that doesn't save money. You're gonna have to retire and if you don't own your house outright, that's a problem. Right, and also let me just give you a stat that I think is important and Kim, I want you to jump in. 31% of young millennials ages 16 to 24 and 33% of older millennials ages 25 to 34 don't have any money in their savings account. So perhaps that's the reason why they're not buying homes, right? And it's yeah. not because they're spending all their money on avocado toast, it's because they are on average making way less than the generation before them and simultaneously dealing with much more debt in the you know in the form of student loan debt right i was going to say like could it be that we're dealing with financial decisions made by a prior generation more focused on short term and we have that as an effect on top of uh, changing tastes or changing times, which is inevitable, no matter what the financial situ situation you grew up in during a formidable part of your life, or a part where you could be earning money or being severely underemployed. Exactly. I still want to figure out how to do all that stuff, though. Do you? Well, I want to own a house. Yeah, That'd we be awesome. all do. It's but then I have to take a job where I don't, where I stop just like. Wearing the same clothes every day and 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 complaining about how people don't like millennials. Yeah, it's look, it's not an easy thing to do, especially if you live in a major city. And it's and look, and I think millennials also like being mobile and like the yeah. ability to move around. And when you own a home, you're kind of stuck in the place that you bought the home in. Right. In the meantime, people still own homes. Yeah. The difference is if we are not buying them, the same people own them. And then there are industries that spring up around renting out houses. Yeah. And so now companies spring up that own a bunch of houses. And that's like in the wake of the housing crash, there were these giant funds that went and bought up a yep. ton of houses mm -hmm. and developments occur. But I mean, it's, it's gonna, time will tell whether we're making really bad decisions or whether we're just changing how the economy looks. We're and, just and also it'll in a housing out. crisis right now. Yeah. I mean, especially Los Angeles, but especially the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. A lot of metropolises are having unreasonably unattainable prices for buying, even renting. Renting, yes. And that's, and part of what this is pointing out, albeit very clunkily with all the, the headlines, is that we, have short term goals all the time. Yeah. And what that does specifically with companies like Airbnb is make the owners of an Airbnb apartment say, what am I gonna do? Offer a realistic, livable, um, attainable rent for a long term tenant? Or am I gonna charge a bunch of short term tenants more per day right. and make more money? And the answer in that situation is the Airbnb owner is gonna say, listen, I'm gonna charge, I'm gonna make five grand this month off Airbnb tenants. I'm not gonna charge three grand for the apartment to someone who's gonna be there the whole time. Right, I know, it's crazy. So yes, That's there are we're problems. That's what we're dealing with. You don't like ads? Well, I hear you, brother. Did you know that you can become a Young Turks member, get the full two hour show every day on demand, plus so many other network shows, all ad free for just 10 bucks a month? Give it a shot right now, tytnetwork.com slash join.